Welcome to the fascinating world of welding. In this video, we're diving deep into the different ways filler metal is transferred through the welding arc, what we call modes of metal transfer. Understanding these modes of metal transfer is crucial for any welder, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro. We'll keep it straightforward, covering the basics, the main requirements, and the advantages and limitations of each mode. The key variables influencing metal transfer include wire diameter, amperage, voltage, and the composition of your shielding gas. We'll be focusing on four fundamental modes, short circuit, globular, spray, and pulsed spray. There are variations, but we'll stick to the core four modes of transfer to keep things clear and simple. First up, let's talk about short circuit transfer, often called short arc. This method involves low heat input where the metal transfers through a series of electrical shorts. Here's how it works. The welding wire makes physical contact with the base material, creating a short. This instantly drops the voltage to zero, but because MIG welding machines are constant voltage power sources, they react immediately, increasing amperage to break that short. This process creates a mini explosion blasting the short away and reigniting the arc. This happens up to 200 times per second. It's why we hear that characteristic crackling noise, often compared to frying bacon and why the arc appears continuous. Short circuit transfer uses low amperage and voltage, resulting in low heat input. This makes it ideal for thinner materials, typically 1 8 inch and under. A major advantage is its all position welding capability. The low heat input allows the puddle to solidify quickly, making it great for out of position work. It's also excellent for dealing with gaps and poor fit up, which is why it's widely used for root passes on pipe. The shielding gas used for short circuit transfer is typically 100% carbon dioxide, or a mix containing 75% argon and 25% carbon dioxide. Although short circuit transfer provides many advantages, it also has its drawbacks. The blasting action generates spatter, which means more cleanup time and wasted electrode. Most importantly, the American Welding Society prohibits its use in pre-qualified welding procedures for structural members due to a high probability of lack of fusion. To illustrate this, take a look at these two welds. On the left, we have a short circuit weld on 3 8 inch plate, showing distinct ripples. On the right, a spray transfer weld. Both look good on the surface, right? But look underneath. The short circuit weld on the left shows clear lack of fusion. The spray transfer weld on the right, however, has deep penetration, giving it almost double the load-bearing capacity. This highlights why following codes like D1.1 is critical for quality and safety. Moving on to globular transfer. Globular transfer occurs at higher current levels than short circuit. Instead of tiny shorts, large metal droplets, or globs, form at the end of the wire and are pulled down into the puddle by gravity. These globs are large and often irregular. They don't always fall perfectly, leading to significant amounts of spatter that can even fuse to the base metal, making cleanup even tougher. The transition current from short circuit to globular isn't a specific number, it's a range. Here are approximate current levels where globular transfer typically begins for different wire diameters. 023, 90 amps. 030, 145 amps. 035, 180 amps. 045, 250 amps. Like short circuit, globular transfer can occur with a mix containing 75% argon and 25% carbon dioxide. However, more often than not, it is used with 100% carbon dioxide. If using a mix and the argon content goes above 80%, we start transitioning to spray transfer. A key advantage of globular transfer is its high heat input, allowing for the welding of thick sections. It's also relatively low cost, using basic equipment and inexpensive gas. However, the excessive spatter is a big limitation, increasing rework. Also, the large fluid weld puddle restricts its use to the flat, and horizontal positions only. The arc can also be erratic and inconsistent. Now let's talk about spray transfer on a, a highly efficient mode where fine droplets of metal are projected axially from the electrode tip to the work. These droplets are smaller than the electrode itself. Spray transfer is characterized by high wire feed speeds, high voltage, and consequently high heat input. It creates a very fluid weld puddle, which again, limits its use to flat and horizontal positions. The welds produced with spray transfer are known for their deep penetration and excellent bead appearance, assuming proper technique is used. 
To achieve spray transfer, you need amperage above a specific transition current and the corresponding voltage for a stable arc. The shielding gas is crucial here, requiring at least 80% argon, with the balance being mostly carbon dioxide or sometimes oxygen at 5% or less. These gas compositions provide a stable medium for the smooth transfer of those fine metal droplets. Typical shielding gas mixes include 90% argon with 10% carbon dioxide and 95% argon with 5% oxygen. However, any mix containing at least 80% argon will suffice. One important thing to note is that as the percentage of argon in the shielding gas mix increases, the transition current decreases. As you can see from this chart, the specific current at which spray transfer is achieved varies depending on electrode diameter and shielding gas composition. Factors like contact tip to work distance also play a role, influencing the actual amperage. Spray transfer offers several significant advantages. Deep penetrating welds due to high heat input, high deposition rates increasing productivity, and very clean spatter-free welds. It's a great choice for thicker sections, one quarter inch and up, and allows for the use of pre-qualified welding procedures. On the flip side, the high heat input means a potential for burn-through on thinner materials and also undercut due to high voltage. The gases are more expensive, and the higher levels of radiated heat can be uncomfortable for the welder. Finally, let's explore pulsed spray transfer, a more advanced GMAW mode. Hey, here, the power source actively changes the amperage back and forth. The power source provides a pulsing peak current, briefly raising the amperage above the transition point for axial spray transfer. This peak current lasts for a very short time, milliseconds, before a lower background current takes over. This background current is just enough to keep the arc lit but prevents metal transfer, meaning metal only transfers during those peak pulses. Ideally, one droplet per pulse. This precise control requires more advanced and, consequently, more expensive welding machines. These machines can cycle between peak and background currents 100 to 400 times per second with higher-end models offering user control over frequency and pulse duration. To achieve pulsed spray, you need to meet all the requirements of regular spray transfer. At least 80% argon in your shielding gas, and the peak current must be above the wire's transition point. Pulsed spray offers several benefits. Firstly, a significant reduction in spatter as it operates in spray transfer mode. Keep in mind, though, that dirty base metal can still cause spatter, Another advantage is that it allows for higher deposition rates in out-of-position welding, like vertical up or overhead. The rapid cooling during the background current phase allows for larger puddles to be carried. This is a big advantage over short circuit, globular, or even regular spray, which are typically limited to flat and horizontal. Another major benefit is the reduction in overall heat input. This can significantly reduce the size of the heat-affected zone and, crucially, minimize distortion, which is a common problem in welding. Pulsed spray is also excellent for thin materials. At a given wire feed speed, it has a lower average amperage than spray, making it ideal for sheet metal where short arc might be too slow. And a bonus, pulsed spray transfer can reduce fume levels compared to all other modes. However, pulsed welding does come with limitations. The equipment is more expensive due to its advanced hardware, and the required gas blends are also typically pricier than those for short circuit or globular transfer. Finally, while it produces less radiated heat than standard spray, the arc is still very bright and can be uncomfortable for the welder compared to short circuit or globular. So there you have it, a breakdown of the four main modes of metal transfer and welding. We hope this video has helped you better understand these fundamental concepts. If you found this helpful, please like this video, subscribe to our channel for more welding insights, and leave your questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching.